All right, hi everyone. Welcome back to another video of Salesforce Makes Sense. We just covered custom metadata, custom settings, and now let's move on to custom labels, right? So I hope we are clear with understanding where to use custom metadata, where to use custom setting, and when would you opt for using a hierarchy custom setting, right? The list custom setting is pretty much the same thing as custom metadata, but the primary idea of hierarchy custom setting is when you want to involve user or profile context in the picture. And based on that, you want to take metadata driven decisions and you want to basically leverage that in your code, right? Now, moving on to custom labels, right? And also one more thing we understood about custom metadata was that it is easily packageable and you know, you can actually migrate the records as well as the object information to higher orgs, right? And with custom settings, the primary benefit was that you can actually uh, query information, but it is stored in the cache. So it is a bit faster and it will not count against your governor limits. Okay. Now let's move on to the third topic, which is custom labels. Again, if I, if you go to Salesforce and you simply type in custom labels, you should be able to find it and you can actually create custom labels similar to custom metadata and custom settings, right? So custom labels enable developers to create multilingual applications by presenting information in their native language, right? So the maximum amount of benefit that you can actually extract out of a custom label is basically translations. That's the whole idea why labels have been created. Okay, a custom label is a text value that can be accessed from Apex classes and all of this stuff. And if you have translation workbench enabled, then you can even translate these labels on the languages that Salesforce supports. So the primary idea is when you click on the new custom label button here, it lets you create the label. Let's say I call it my header info, right? And I just say, welcome to the world of Salesforce makes sense, right? And if you see the language is by default set to English, right? That is the current language of the current user who's logged in. It's based on that. Now, when I hit the save button here, right? So the label gets created, right? And if I go back to my custom label list, you'll see that, okay, now there are three labels, right? And if I open translation workbench. So there's something called translation workbench and you can actually use this feature to translate all your labels. So if you go to translate language settings here, you'll see that you get to enable it. And once you enable it is only when you'll be able to add translations. Okay. Let me just go ahead and try to enable it. All right. That's a, this is a developer edition org. Let's give it a try. I'll just go ahead and say enable. And now the translation workbench is enabled and I can choose to add new languages here. So I'll just go ahead and add Let's say, what do I add? Let's say I add Spanish, right? And I'll just say it is available for this user. Okay, save. Right, so I've just added one language and now just see how things will differ if I go to custom labels now. And if I open my my header info custom label, you see a translation box is, box is showing up, meaning that in language English, my header info should evaluate as welcome to the world of Salesforce makes sense, right? But if you want to keep a translation, you can create a translation for the Spanish language I can, and you can actually put your Spanish information here. So if I say welcome to the world of Salesforce makes sense, wow, this is fancy. I'll just say bienvenido al mundo de salesforce tiene sentido <laughs> nice right so now what i can do is i can put my spanish translation here and i can say save now what benefit does this give us wherever you access this custom label based on the native language of the person who's logged in and let's say that person is from the spanish locale or region this particular title if leveraged as a custom label will display automatically in this translation. You don't have to worry about anything. That's the best part of custom labels. All right. So that's one key part wherein you can actually handle translations. All right. And this will only come in handy based on the language or the local information of the person who's logged in. It automatically translates based on that. You don't have to do anything around it. Okay, so that was just one quick thing I wanted to show in terms of the benefits, but we want to see how to use custom labels in Apex, right? That's what we want to see. So if you're planning to display the information based on region or locale and you need to ensure translations are available, you don't have that provision in custom metadata or custom setting. And first of all, those two things are not for this, right? For translations. So for translations, you have custom labels. Okay, so any kind of constants, let's say you're developing a website. 
right let's say you are developing an experience cloud portal and you have let's say the header section the footer section and you have different static content right you put static content i'll just quickly show you right for example this is a website salesforce makes sense.com if this was built in salesforce let's assume that if this was built in the salesforce crm as an experience cloud portal you see your salesforce journey starts here if this was a custom label and you were logged in from let's say germany so this would automatically translate to german and show that to you how how cool is that feature right so that's the whole idea of custom label so if you have a portal wherever you have any kind of statics or constants that are defined and that won't change but might need translation you can choose custom labels okay one key benefit is when using dynamic navigating urls and you want to store the base url so this is more on a technical standpoint see a lot of places when we are writing apex code or we are writing you know um, lightning code or anything we have to you know return a url to navigate to that page as soon as this record is created navigate to record page as soon as this button is clicked navigate to this particular page as soon as this record is clicked uh, download the pdf and open the preview mode of that pdf so all of this stuff needs a navigation and wherever navigation comes into picture you need to have a relative url you cannot have a hard coded url why because every environment will have a different url the base url will be different so where do you store the base url how can you make it dynamic by using a custom label so you don't have to put the entire path every time in your code you can just part put the relative path the base url will automatically change based on the custom label you've configured on that org makes sense if this makes sense just type in custom labels makes sense right awesome so now let's quickly look at how do you actually leverage this so i don't need to create a new apex class for this i'll simply show you how to access a label Right. So if you are on, let's say your, I'll close my website. I'll go to VS Code, and this is called Explore Custom Metadata. Right. Let me just open this Explore Custom Metadata. Right. And what I want to show you is that I want to access the value that's available here. And what is the name of the label? It is My Header Info. So you always have to copy the master label. And now you can simply, you can simply type System dot label dot the name of the label that's it if you do that you have the value of the label that's it and that is how you'll access it okay so i've just printed it out on line 5 and if i just go ahead and say execute retrieve pricing parity execute line number 5 should print me welcome to the world of salesforce makes sense let's see it says welcome to the world of salesforce makes sense awesome so this is how you can leverage it now, if you want to use it anywhere, right, this is a debug statement I showed, but let's say you want to leverage this information in your code, you can just store it in a variable, right? You can simply say string dot string uh, my header info label is equal to and then you can say system dot label. Okay, interesting thing, thing to note system dot label dot my header info. What does that mean? That means that there is a label class which has this particular API name of the label and that label class is coming from the system class. That's the parent class. All right. Now the interesting part is that can you instantiate this? No, you cannot instantiate labels, which is why these are not objects. Remember, I, I showed you, I, I explained this to you in one of the previous slides. I don't have to go I'll go back a lot, but if I go here, if I go to Salesforce objects, so you see under Salesforce object, we talked about what object is and I told you custom labels cannot be instantiated. They are directly used by the system class. So they are not standard objects. Why? Because you are saying system dot label dot my header info, but you never instantiated it. And anything that you cannot instantiate, you cannot call it an object as simple as that. All right. So you see, it, we have come a full circle. We have reached that point wherein we actually understand what this note meant. All right. So this was a very short tutorial and that's all about labels. But I hope you are now comfortable and clear about where to use custom metadata, what are its benefits, where to use custom settings, what are its benefits and when would you want to use custom labels. Okay. Now, if there are any discussions around these topics or whenever someone says metadata driven development, you now know what needs to be done. And whenever someone pitches a new business process or a new functional requirement, you can actually think about these processes and actually suggest, okay, can we use this custom metadata to store this if we use custom setting maybe this is how we can approach it and why not use custom labels to do this kind of things right so i want you guys to start thinking start talking in in this way so that it develops confidence in you and it also develops confidence in your team lead and in your business so that they can rely on you for more subject matter expertise right that's the idea cool so that was about custom labels and we are good with 
custom labels now we'll move on to the next topic awesome and the next topic is going to be errors and exceptions all right so we'll look at a lot of uh, exceptions and we'll try to see when they come and it is all going to be very interesting and yeah that's the that, that's the next set of videos all right cool i'll see you in the next one bye